Hello everyone! We want to give you the best experience with our support, so we will give you a few tips in this video. If for example Blender crashes, it is always very helpful for us if you send us a range of information. And if you need help with your scenes, a description and a blend file is useful too. Wherever we can support you, the best way to do this is via our support form or by email. Here's a simple scene. And when I start the simulation, yes, then Blender just crashes. No idea why, I've tried everything. I would like to provide the Flip Fluids team with everything possible so that they can help me or maybe even discover a bug in the software. First of all, I want to reduce the file size. For this, I clean up in my scene. I set surface display and the white water display to none and then click reload frame. This way, geometry is not saved in the blend file. I also remove unnecessary content such as unused images, what can be done via file, clean up unused data blocks, unused linked data blocks and unused local data blocks. In general, only the objects relevant to the simulation will be sufficient. Then I must not forget to save the file now, optimally with a different file name, because it is always good to keep an original. Changes that the Flipfruits team may have made to my blend file can later be loaded into my original file via a pan. It works like this. I would then get a modified file sent to me. And with my original file opened, I click File, Append, find the corrected file, double click, then Objects, and now I can select the objects that the team optimized for me. I always get an email rapidly telling me what objects has been optimized. For this example, the domain was optimized and also Suzanne because of the well-known non-manifold problem. So I select both while holding down the control key and click on Append. Now, of course, I have both Domain and Suzanne in the scene twice. The simulation would not start at least with a second domain, as you can see when hitting Bake. So I delete the original domain. The new domain is of course in exactly the same place as the old one, and keyframes are preserved. Everything is actually the same as before, just optimized by the Flip Fluids team. I still have to delete the second Susan, otherwise I would still have the faulty model in the scene. Because the domain also includes other objects, such as fluid surface and all white water objects, there are duplicates of those as well. The originals should therefore also be deleted. And the whole thing is more comfortable when I use the delete domain operator. I'll also show you briefly. So let me undo the deletion. Mark the old original domain and click delete domain. The original domain and everything that belonged to it is removed with one click. Another small tip before I return to the original topic. With a click on Organize, all Flip Fluids add-on objects are sorted nicely in the outliner, if this hasn't been done before. Perfect! The next step is to pack the blend file into a zip archive and very important, what should also be included in the zip archive are the log files generated by the add-on. And if I really want to do it 100%, I can also check whether Blender itself hasn't created a crash file. And if so, put it in the zip archive as well. There are certainly many ways to do this. I'll show you how I do this on Windows, but the steps will also be similar on macOS or Linux. First, 
I use the Windows Explorer to go to the folder where I saved my previously optimized blend file. Here I right click on the blend file and then click compress to zip file. The file name can remain as it is. Now I have a zip archive and now I can add the log files to the zip archive. To do this I open the cache folder and copy the logs folder to the clipboard. If I now open the zip archive I can simply paste the log folder from the clipboard here. And if Blender created a crash file, I can add it in the same way. Where you can usually find this crash file, I write in the description of this video. For Windows users, it should be here, in the Users folder. The file usually has a file extension called .crash.txt and if I copy this file to the clipboard, yes, then I can now paste it into the zip archive as well. And done. I now have a zip archive with a blend file, a log folder and the blender crash file inside. If I don't necessarily want to share my blend file now, then I can at least save the log folder and the zip archive is ready. This procedure will vary by a little bit depending on the system. But basically I think that with little effort I can support the FlipFluids team very well in solving problems. And now this archive can be uploaded to a cloud or attached directly to the form or email. That just depends on the file sizes and preferences. Now let's take a look at the support form on the FlipFluids homepage, flipfluids.com. And in the menu there is support, support form. Here I can request support in a very comfortable way. I think it's good that no registration is required and that there are input fields for everything that is important. That's going really well. So I enter the name first and then it's Fassbender and my email address. After all, I would like to receive feedback from the team of course. I know that I use this email address when purchasing the add-on and that was Wire Blender Market. Since Blender always crashes, I think bugs and issues is the right checkbox here. And so I will describe my problem. Hello, unfortunately Blender always crashes after frame 6 when I try to simulate my scene. I've tested everything possible and can't get any further. And now it asks for system information. Here the FlipFluids add-on provides me with a very simple option. In the Blender menu, under Help, Flip Fluids, I find Copy System and Blend Info and with a click on it, useful information is copied to the clipboard. All I have to do is paste them from the clipboard into this field here. Does an error text appear in Blender's console? Well, if Blender may not crash, but an error still occurs, then there may be an error message generated by the add-on or Blender. I can easily see it by clicking on Window, Toggle System Console. An important hint here, this works different on macOS and Linux, where you need to launch Blender from the command line to be able to see the system console. I will link some information about this in the description of this video. Now I can mark the text that I see here with the mouse, copy it to the clipboard with Ctrl C for Windows and then paste it here in the support form. However, if there was a crash and therefore there is no error text, then the field simply remains empty. Can I share a bland file? Yes, I can insert a link from a cloud here, for example, or I can attach another link to the zip archive. It's practical that I can simply drag my file in here. That's how I like it. Finally, I confirm that I'm not a robot, well, I guess I'm not, anyway, and here we go. Great. If the support form is not my preferred contact option, I can of course simply send a support request by email. Here too, as much information as possible should be given. So here's a quick example. 
I open my mail program and create a new email to support at flipfluids.com with the subject the simulation crashes. Content? Hello support team. I'm currently having the problem that Blender always crashes when the simulator is at frame 6. I have tried everything, but I just can't get the problem under control. Can you help me? Here's my system information. And as I said, I can copy this directly from Blender to the clipboard and then paste it here into the email. And I can add a console error here if there's one and the link to the zip archive. Or if the file is small enough, I can attach it directly here. Yeah, can't regards, Dennis. This is what an optimal support request email looks like. Okay, for less urgent things, you can also look around the forum. In general, an interesting place to talk about scenes and ideas. And for questions that might be asked frequently, there's also a frequently asked questions section on the site. The documentation also provides a scene troubleshooting page that covers the most common issues that I may encounter when using the add-on. It's quite possible that I'll find a solution to my problem here without having to wait for a reply by email. On workdays support is usually very quick, on weekends requests are processed less often. That depends on the scope of the problem and the time of the request. Well, that's it for now. If you miss any information or have any wishes or suggestions, please write here in the comments. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.